Yeah, it's a wonderful thing to be able to say, it is well with my soul. Uh, it is well with my soul. You know, everything else may be going on around you today. I don't know what's on your mind as you pulled into this parking lot this morning. Uh, but if you are in Christ Jesus today, then it is well with your soul. The section we're in this morning, uh, today, and really for the last couple of weeks, has been, you know, what we've been looking at, what the Christian life is like in everyday action. And the verse today centers around Christian service. That is serving others, serving people. In Romans chapter 12, verse 11, here's what the Word of God says, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The NLT translation says, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. God's Word translation says, don't be lazy in showing your devotion. Use your energy to serve the Lord. Would you bow in prayer with me at this time? Father in heaven, we ask for your anointing. We ask for the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we do thank you today as we just sang, it is well with my soul. Lord, what peace that brings to your people. And Lord, now we ask for your anointing, we ask for the feeling again of the Spirit as your word goes out today. Speak to our hearts, Lord, whether we be sitting on the pew in the sanctuary or sitting in our car. Just bless your word as it goes out, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. A few months ago, we began looking at Romans chapter 12, verse by verse. And Paul told us to not be like the world. And, and how the world thinks and acts should be different than how the Christian thinks and acts. And, and he told us that our bodies, this, this shell of the body that, that houses your eternal soul. He told us that these bodies belong to God. They belong to the Lord. And that we should honor Him with our bodies. And He told us to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. And with things going on, in the world right now. You know, the world is frightened. This world, our nation, is divided. And, and even chaotic at times. You know, you don't know who is telling the truth and who is lying. You don't know who is targeting, you know, who is looking out for themselves, for self, and who is looking out for others. And the world is reacting to that fear and the unknowns with anxiety, depression, anger, and even sometimes violence. And therefore, people are walking around today afraid, drained, confused, disappointed, maybe from unmet expectations and broken dreams. They're bitter, apathetic, and even living in regret. But my brothers, my sisters, Jesus Christ came to give us hope. To give us hope. And we as Christians, we have what the world lacks, a sure and steadfast hope this morning. I wonder as you go about your day, I wonder if your face shows the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. I wonder if the way that you live your life shows the peace that you have that passes all understanding through Jesus Christ. I wonder about that this morning. What we need to remember and recognize is that if we are properly living for Him, is that God is in control and we need to see the flow of life from His eternal and heavenly perspective. Now, that perspective, that, that eternal and heavenly perspective isn't governed or controlled by man's timetable. 
You know, a lot of times we want things to happen on our timetable when we think it should. And, and God's eternal and heavenly perspective is not according to your comfort level, but according to His plans. And the writer of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 3, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. You know, our seasons sometimes have new things that begin. Such as this morning, my daughter Alexis is moving into her USC Bluffton dorm as I speak this morning. Our seasons also sometimes have things that are in Such as maybe someone retiring from their job, selling their home, and moving someplace else. And these seasons not only impact us personally, but also the people around us. You know, Alexis leaving will impact the relationships that she has made here, but also enable her to form new relationships there and allow her to experience new things there, a new chapter, a new environment, a new season for her, and a new season for her daddy and her mom as well, and her siblings. Lots of adjustments will be necessary on our part. We'll miss it. And as parents, you're more comfortable with your children with you. But that is not the season that she is now in, you see. And I say all of that to say this. The season that you are personally in right now, there is a purpose in it that God has ordained. The season your family members are in, your spouse, your children, whomever, there is a purpose in it that God has ordained. The season that this church is in, whether we worship inside or outside, who is currently pastoring in the year 2021, who is sitting on the peace, all of them, there is a purpose in it that God has ordained. And the season that this nation is currently in, even with the chaos that we talk about, there is a purpose in it that God has ordained. So the writer writes, and he says, to everything there is a season and a purpose. And then he continues on in verse 2, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. God says there is a special ordained time for everything happening in your life right now. Everything happening around you, above you, beside you, and in you, there is a purpose for it this morning. So you say, Jeffrey, what am I supposed to do? Embrace God and His plan for you. Embrace God and His plan for your family. Embrace God and His plan for this church and this nation. Sometimes it's a season of loss. Sometimes a season of gain. Sometimes it's a season of embracing. 
And then like we've seen during parts of this past year, when COVID sometimes a season not to embrace. Sometimes it's a season of laughing. Sometimes a season of weeping. Sometimes a season of silence. Sometimes a season of speaking. Sometimes a time of life. And as we all know, sometimes a time of death. And who controls all of that at this point? Sometimes we think we control it. Sometimes our government thinks they control it. But who controls all of these seasons and all of these times ultimately? God does. Amen, does it? God controls all of it. And again, everything happening in your life, whether it's something medically, something physical, whether it's something emotional, some loss in your life, some gain, something exciting, something exciting happening right now, there's a season and there's a reason, a purpose for what is going on in your life right now on this particular day. And he says in verse 11, talking about God, He has made everything beautiful in His time. Folks, understand that there is a season and purpose for everything. And when you begin to spiritually understand that, that you will finally start to mature and grow in the Lord and live for Him as we've been talking about and serve Him as we've been talking about without all the fret. And we won't grow weary and well doing just because you're doing something. You look across there and say, well, why is she doing anything? You'll get beyond all that. His plans are right and just for your life. No matter what season that we're in, we're commanded to serve the Lord. Notice Paul tells us a couple of things in our original text, going back to Romans 12, verse 11. Paul tells us a couple of things about serving the Lord. And the first one is not slumber. Not slumber. That word slothful means lazy, slow move, dragging your feet, sluggish, complacent, delaying. You know, we can get that way sometimes, can we? And to help relate this beyond the obvious of just being lazy and not doing what God has called us to do, an individual example could be a married couple. Suppose a couple has been disagreeing about some decision that needs to be made. And suppose that this disagreement has turned into some arguments that have become heated such that this husband and wife aren't really talking to each other a whole lot. In fact, they're not even sleeping in the same bed. There's sort of a wall there. They kind of got a little bit. And remember Ecclesiastes 3.7 that we just read? There is a time to speak. A time to talk through that issue. And sometimes we can be hesitant, slow moving, drag our feet when it comes to reconcile. In the church, we can see something that needs to be done. Or we can hear of someone who needs help and, and we're slothful. We, we put it off. And, and maybe, you know, we think, well, if I take my time doing it, I see the need. But if I take my time doing it, maybe somebody else will notice it and they'll do it before me. So I don't have to. For some people, laziness has become a way of life. A farmer was sitting on his porch when a stranger walked by. And that stranger asked that farmer, how are they? The farmer said, Tyler, two weeks ago, a tornado came along and knocked down all the trees that I would have had to chop down for this winter's firewood. So that tornado did it, and I didn't have to. And then last week, Lightning struck the brush that I had planned to burn to clear the fields for planting. So the lightning did the work for me. And the stranger said, well, that's, that's remarkable. What are you doing now? The farmer answered, 
answered, Wake up an earthquake to come along and shake them taters out of the ground. Kind of a funny story to illustrate how we allow someone else to do what we should be doing. Church, we're commanded to not be a slothful people when it comes to serving the Lord and working in His church. Now, we don't want to always just rush into things. But if you have prayed and God has laid something on your heart, then quit putting it off. Don't delay. Get busy for Him. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy mind. It's important that you do what you need to do now without putting it off or you could regret it. I know several years ago, Joy and I were going to go out to eat uh, with a couple over in Aiken at a restaurant there. And, and uh, we, I knew several people that were in the hospital in Aiken, so I went on ahead and Joy was going to ride with that couple over to Aiken and we would all just meet the restaurant after I'd made those hospital visits and we had an approximate time that, that we would meet the restaurant. Well, one of the visits took a little longer, I spent a little longer in the one particular room than the other, so there was one person, actually a good family friend uh, for years that I didn't get to visit uh, that night because the time ran out and, and, and I heard that you know, she was a little nervous, but overall she was okay in the short term. Uh, she was doing fairly well. And, and I thought to myself, I said, well, I'm going to go meet Joy and this couple for supper. And I'll come back and, and visit, visit her tomorrow. I'll just come back all day and, and visit her in the hospital tomorrow. She seems to be doing okay. Well, overnight, she got worse. And she went into a coma. And she died a short time later. I never got to talk to her. And I mention that to say that if there is something that you know that you need to do, then do it. Do it. Start whatever it is. If you've been saying, you know, I need to bring my kids to church more, or, or I need to come to Wednesday night Bible study, or I need to talk to Uncle Johnny about that squabble that we got into a...
to share your faith now, to share your faith today with loved ones. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. And sometimes people ask, why in the way? And sometimes we'll holler a little bit, you know, in the pulpit. And uh, the Holy Spirit just kind of takes a hold of my voice. But this verse says that I should be on fire for God. Not cold. If someone stood up here and they didn't get a little passionate, a little fiery, a little emotional about God, then I would wonder if the Lord lives within them. Christ says, love you with an infinite fervency. We should serve Him with that same spirit. Church hand, time is short. If you're going to serve the Lord, then do it. Don't hesitate. If you want to serve the Lord, then do it with all of your mind. Be fervent on fire for God. God has allowed you and me to be alive on this Sunday, August the 15th, 2021, for a reason, for a purpose. You have entered into this season as ordained by Holy God. Everything you are encountering today, everything you are experiencing today has been allowed by Him. So I ask you, how are you these days? Are you accepting the good and the bad as a believer in Jesus Christ who knows that God is in control? Are you nervous or scared or, or confused like the world? God is still working around us and in us during the days in which we live. Be aware and join in when you see Him working. You know, many, many, many families need to be served these days. The opportunities right now are endless to help people. Will you join in God's work and help someone who is in need? The point today is that living for Him means that I serve Him. No matter what season you're in this morning, it might be springtime, something new is starting in your life. It might be summertime. It might be the fall. It might be the winter in which something is ending, something is coming to a close in your life. But then after the winter comes spring, something new will be happening. A couple of questions to think about this morning during this time of reflection. And I'm, I'm always going to be standing right here. Someone needs to get out of their car. I'll be glad to pray with you right here. Someone from inside the sanctuary has something going on and if you'd like us to pray together, we can do that right on the front lawn, or I'll be glad to pray with you after the service. But a couple of questions I want you to think about as we close. When you think about the best time of your life, the best time in your life, do you look to the past and say, oh, those were the good old days? Do you look to the future? Are you excited about the future and what's in store? Do you look to the present and say, God is blessing me so much right now. God is good. So when you think about the best time of your life, are you constantly looking to the past as though there will never be any good days ahead? Are you, are you looking to the future? Or even current? You know, the Christian life's an adventure. Serving the Lord is an adventure. You know, God has a plea for you 
to do your life's not over. And then secondly, are you currently wasting your life away, settling for mediocrity? Instead of aiming high, you're aiming low, and so you're, you're settling and wasting your life away. Or are you truly giving it all you got for the Lord? Whether you're 12 years old, 40 years old, 70 years old, 90 years old, are you giving it all you got for the Lord? Or are you thinking, I'm no good for God? There's plenty that we can do for the Lord. Keep serving Him, church. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, we thank you for these few moments to share your word. And Lord, there are various seasons in life that we all go through. Sometimes they are, are winter seasons where things are ending. For instance, Alexis leaving our home. But Lord, also part of that winter is the spring season that comes ushering in. New beginnings for her. And Lord, all of us are in some season in life. Whether we're approaching retirement, whether we're starting a new job, whether we're coming out of some adventure or into another. Lord, but help us to recognize that there is a purpose for everything. For every season. And Lord, ultimately, it's all ordained by you, and alack by you. And Lord, help us as we mature and grow in Christ to yield to your will for our lives. That's when things will finally begin to make sense to us. That's when things will, will finally, uh, Lord, we'll have peace. Even with chaos happening all around us, we have that peace because you live in us. Lord, bless this time of response. Help us to reflect on these questions. Have I given up serving you, Lord? Is my life just wasting away because I think there's nothing I can do due to my age or due to this isolation or whatever it might be? Lord, we can serve you. Speak to our hearts, we pray, O Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.